Yer, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name, back at it again with another Giants video. This is of course the free agency who to sign video that I told you all about. Took a while to get together, you know, took a while to write the script for this one. Took a while to, uh, you know, basically make the thumbnails, you know, the backgrounds for it. I'm gonna record now and I know it's gonna take a while to edit. So, you know, today is like the 27th. I have no idea when you guys are going to see this because it might take a long time for me to get to finish this. But before we get into the video, just as always, uh, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Follow my Twitter and Instagram pages because you won't get my notifications from YouTube. You'd probably get them from there. And uh, like the video, comment down below, share it everywhere. Thank you to my current subscribers. Welcome to the new ones. Let's get right into it. So the Giants going into this offseason, I'm not sure about the rankings, but I know they're top 10 in salary cap space that they have to spend on free agents. And it's really interesting because we're a rebuilding team and we have a lot of options that we could go to spend this money with. Now this vid is kind of a combination of what I would do and what I think is going to happen. So it's not really either or, it's kind of mixed into there of what I think is gonna happen you know just just like that and a little bit of what I would do like I think we're gonna sign um, certain positions and then the, who I filled in those positions with or who I would want to fill fill it in with you know what I'm saying like for example we I think we're gonna sign a middle linebacker in free agency and we could sign any middle linebacker but I specifically want to sign the one that's in here you know what I'm saying if that doesn't confuse you all now before we get into it, the current cap space that we have right now is $61,887,216. It's a lot of money, but we could have more because we're going to have cuts. I made a whole video about it. We could have a bunch of cuts. These are the five main cuts that I think are going to happen, even though I don't agree with two of them. But I think Alec Ogletree, he makes $11.75 million. He's going to get cut. We're going to get $8.25 million from him. Antoine Bethea, he makes $2.875 million. He'll give us $8.75 mil when we cut him. Kareem Martin makes $5.966 million. He'll give us $4.8 million. Spencer Pulley makes $2.75 million. He'll give us $2.75 million. And Rhett Ellison makes $7.18 million. He'll give us $5.8 just straight up five million dollars and there's more players that can probably will be cut they make um you know the more players that will be cut make less money but you know when you cut enough of them you you give the cap space a little bit of a boost and i'm not trying to name some specific names but you know depth players late round picks from previous drafts you know maybe guys like chris slayton and other depth players other guys on special teams they can definitely be cut um but for now i'm gonna roll with these numbers because if I try and predict every single person on the team that's going to be released, it's just too many variables. You know, it's too variable, just, you know, a little hard to keep track of. And there's no real way to, you know, predict who that's going to be. But keep in mind, even though right now the projected cap that I have up there with the cuts is $82,886,300, it could be higher. And I think it will be higher. But we're going to roll with this for now. Now then, before we dive into actual free agency, there's a couple essential things that's going to make the cap dim a little bit. Gotta set aside 10 million for draft. That's just a given. No matter what the number of the cap space is here, you just gotta set aside 10 million for draft. I'm gonna set aside another 10 million for in season moves as Gettleman and Mara, you know, basically the entire front office, they're stated that they wanna have a little bit of money you know, and a good amount of money. To be able to make some moves within the season you know what i mean they don't want to spend every single dollar out here in free agency and i agree with that so we're going to set aside 10 million for those in-season moves re-signings which i'm about to address right now is also another thing that will make the cap dwindle and right now before we head into re-signings it's the cap space is at 62 million eight hundred eighty six thousand three hundred dollars I'm gonna round that up to just $63 million to keep it simple, so I don't have to, you know, say the whole number, but we're just gonna round up to $63 million. 
getting into resignings, who can we possibly resign? There's a bunch of players on the team whose contracts are ending. But there's three main guys that I think we're going to target to resign. You know, obviously, if they agree to the contract, if they're, um, you know, if they, their team first, you know, all that, if, if they're happy with being here, I think there's three, three main players we're going to target. First up, Leonard Williams. Of course, this is mainly because um, uh, Dave Gettleman basically traded for this guy and, and he traded away some good draft capital, so you want to keep him around and because he helped improve our run defense. And now that he's not the top guy at his position, and the top guy at his position is making like 20 mil a year, that being Aaron Donald, but he is very good. And I think, I think we're going to try and give him a good amount of money, but my deal for him, my deal for him, I think we're going to give him 4 years, 48 million. 4 years, 48 million. It's, it's a good amount of money. I mean, of course it's a good amount of money. Even a million dollars is a good amount of money. But it's a good amount of money for how he's performing at his position. Uh, the, the contract length is um, it's not like, a, like an overly long deal that you're stuck in. It's uh, more so like a three-year deal, to be honest, because most of that money probably is going to come out in the first three years. And you could always cut him after the third and also I think I think uh, I think this is something that Gettleman would offer him like I said he's definitely not gonna get 20 million but he's gonna get more than 10 million he's probably gonna get a contract more around like where he's making I want to say 14 mil annually for some reason I feel like that's the contract he's gonna get if we do resign him but this is what I think he's worth next up is Marcus Golden and this is what I'm gonna put an asterisk on for now because depending who else we may or may not sign in free agency, specifically at the outside linebacker position, and depending whether or not the Giants have plans to tackle that in the draft very, very early on, we might not resign him. But if we do, a three years, $30 million deal, perfect. $10 million a year, I think he's worth exactly that. I think he'll be happy with that. I don't see, I actually do not see another team giving him this money because they'll see the flaws in him that we already know exist. There's a there's a risk with signing Golden again, uh, and it's a bigger risk than when we than when we signed him on last year, and that is he seems to only perform in the aggressive three four scheme that James Betcher runs, and I don't know man maybe he can adjust it maybe he could perform in Patrick Graham's scheme uh, because this is gonna be like a very hybrid defense, and he, Marcus Golden is not that versatile of a player he could only really rush the passer he's okay against the run. But he could only rush the passer in a certain scheme. Um, there is a risk with signing him. Other teams see that too. So I think we're probably going to be the only team offering this guy around $10 million a year. And Golden seems happy here. You know what I'm saying? He kind of revived his career here. Even though his, um, his defensive coordinator is gone, I think he'll be happy to come back. But for now, let's put an asterisk on him. The third guy I think we're going to try and target. And this is because of just he's been a, he's been a very underrated leader in the locker room. And uh, he's been a good player on special teams mostly, but also he's been a great backup. Uh, even, you know, good fringe starter at times. Michael Thomas, the safety. And right now he's on a two years, $80 million, um, $8 million yield. Not $80 million, $8 million. <laughs> I think we're going to give him that money again. Two years, $8 million. He's uh, performed well at that money, performed well at that length of contract. Maybe it will be more. Maybe it will be a three, four year deal, but with the same $4 million a year. Um, even if we give him like say two years, 10 million, I wouldn't be mad, but Thomas is very underrated later and he has very good skills on the special teams and whenever he performs as a safety, you know, he's mostly there as a backup, but he's good and I like him. I, I want to keep him around in the locker room. I believe they'll try and target him back and there's three other players who I uh, did not list our contracts for because we just might let them go. But these three players might have similar contracts to Michael Thomas, and I think we're going to try and target them too. Uh, you know, them being Cody Latimer, a Buck Allen, and a David Mayo. They might make uh, less than Thomas, but I think it's going to be contracts around that area, so to speak. And of course, just like in um, the caps, uh, the cap section with who we could cut, where there's more players we could resign. For now. Moving into actual free agency, let's keep it at Michael Thomas and Leonard Williams because I said Marcus Golden, there's going to be an asterisk there. But for now, let's go into free agency pretending that we signed Leonard and Michael. So we have around $47 million left to spend. And now I'm going to set aside a little bit more money 
let me set aside the 7 mil from the 47 mil for um you know let's say uh some more depth position you know just to set aside you know just to sign maybe re-sign those players that i listed up there let me set aside that 7 million i just want to set aside some more money because i don't want to spend everything you know what i mean so then it's going to be more like 10 million because like i said more cuts could happen but for now let's set aside that 7 million and we're actually going in with around 40 million dollars first person up and i've seen this on a lot of videos i've seen this on goddamn near almost every giants youtubers uh page and i can't disagree with them because i want it to happen too and because it would be a great sign for the team jack conklin now before i get into actually jack conklin the highest paid lineman right now is getting around 18 million dollars i think it's a tackle from the eagles i could be wrong and conklin is up there to make that amount of money but we cannot afford to give him that Personally, I think he's worth around um, 16 million dollars, so it's not that far from 18 mil. But he is coming off an ACL injury, which helps us in contract negotiations. But I do think he's going to be recovering just fine this year because ACL injuries, you know, what I'm saying they usually take around two years to heal properly, and you saw that with Conklin towards the end of the season. And even though I think he's worth around 16 million dollars, uh, because of what Solder is making. In, in real life, it might actually be higher. You know what I'm saying? Like, Solar is making, I think, around like 16 and a half, maybe 15 and a half million dollars. Hopefully, we could get another contract restructuring with him because he's obviously not worth that. But I don't even need to get in why we need to sign Conklin. You guys already know our tackle positions are very, very bad right now. And Jack Conklin is going to be the absolute best cut tackle on the market and also the youngest one. So, why not get him? And I have him on a five year. 80 million dollar deal i put a little pause because that's a huge contract that's an absolutely massive contract you know what i'm saying even though he's only making 60 million dollars a year and i think he's probably gonna get more that's still a massive contract and he's worth every money he's worth every penny he's worth all that money and if we get him for that i still think that's a very fair contract i would not mind dishing out that amount of money to Jack Conklin because I think he's worth it man I think I think he's really I think we could give him that you know what I mean and he would be a great help to this offensive line but it's still that's still a lot of money that only leaves us with 24 million dollars to spend in free agency and we're already just off of signing one player <laughs> down to this little amount of money and now the next player I'll target like I said wanted to be like a Let's go middle linebacker. Let's let's go middle linebacker. And I got two names in mind. I got two names in mind. I got Corey Littleton or Kyle Van Noy. Now then, Van Noy should be a bit more obvious than Littleton. He's a New England Patriot. He has a connection with a bunch of people on the team. More likely uh, Joe Judge more than anybody. I believe he will fit whatever defense we try and run here because the defense we're trying to run is going to be very similar to the Patriots in the sense that you attack the weaknesses of your opponent's offense, which week by week, it's going to be different. And that's what Kyle Van Noy has been doing in the Patriots. That's why he's been successful. He is up there in age, which is why I'm going to give him a three-year version of the four-year deal I will give to Corey Littleton. And I believe Corey Littleton, while younger, um... That's the only thing he really has over Kyle Van Noy. I think they both perform at around a similar level. Littleton for the Rams and Noy for the uh, Patriots. Now then, the highest paid position, I mean the highest paid at the position for middle linebackers is around $17 million annually. These guys are not going to get that because they're not <laughs> the best players at their position. But they are going to get more than $10 million. I'm going to give them 4 years $45 million dollars. Or a three-year version of Kyle Van Noy, which is around eleven million two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't know if Littleton would take this, but I'm I'm damn sure Kyle Van Noy would have no problem taking this money, especially at a three-year deal. I, I'm I'm very sure he'd have no problem coming onto the Giants for that kind of money. Littleton might he might want a bit more, but we're tight on cap space right now. We could we could still give him more, because if we don't go the um, route of not signing another big-name player, the only other major Resigning we'd have would be Marcus Golden. That's why I put the asterisk on him and he had a three-year 30 million dollar deal Which is 10 million spent on the year 
and we got 2.75 million left to spend you could throw that in there if you were um if the giants really want to target Corey lilton but that middle linebacker position has to be addressed very soon much like goddamn near every position on the defense it's not good right now you know what i mean it's not good and very similarly to the um pass rusher it hasn't been addressed in a long time those are two major positions on the defense that have sort of been left out to dry and they need to be addressed. And these guys are not, they're, they're not game changers, but they're up there in um, experience and in leadership. Uh, more, Cal, more so Calvin knowing with the leadership, but they're also really, really good players at their position. And if we just have a middle linebacker core made up of really, really good players, you know what I'm saying, a Calvin Noy, um, a Ryan Connolly, um, maybe somebody else will get in the draft. We can have a strong middle linebacking core. It doesn't have to be all big superstars. And now then that's that's the way we would go if we don't sign another big player. If now if we don't go and get another big game player, this is where the asterisk from Marcus Golden comes into play. Because we did not sign another outside linebacker, we didn't sign another pass rusher or whatever, we have good enough money and good enough reason to re-sign Marcus Golden. Now, it still could be affected by what we do in the draft, but at this point, there's not really a reason to not get Golden. And if we sign him, same deal, three years, $30 million, you know, that, that's $10 million a, a year, leaves us with about $2.75 million to spend on any other debt players, in addition to the $7 million left over that I put aside earlier. And the, the reason I put that aside earlier, if I didn't explain it quite enough, was just because... I'm just putting that aside, you know, for players that I don't know we're going to sign. Like, I, the, these are, the players that I put in here are who I believe to be going to be, um, you know, high-impact players, even if their contracts don't look like high-impact players. And the money will be spent, the remaining money, on a bunch of uh, role that players, maybe even some diamonds in the rough, because Marcus Golden was kind of a diamond in the rough last offseason. And with that being said, moving on to the next one. If we do sign another big player, you know what I'm saying, we sign Jack Conklin, when we only have $24 million left to spend, uh, the other big player being Shaq Barrett or Yannick Ngakwe, I'd give them four years, $20 million, or uh, a little bit less than that. Let's say four mil, $19 million, $750,000. Uh, the reason I said such a very specific, weirdly specific number is because somewhere along the line of writing the script, I, I had some miscalculations and that number popped up don't worry i fixed it you know everything adds up now you can check for yourself but it's more likely going to be like a 20 million dollar deal at four years uh personally i don't think any of them <laughs> are worth that money but that's just what the market dic the market dictates um i really think they're both worth around like 15 to 16 million dollars a year but with the nfl market especially with pass rushers and quarterbacks it's the next man up you know what I'm saying? And Yannick or Shaq, they're both going to get big, um, you know, big contracts. But I also both believe that they're going to get re-signed by their team. You know what I mean? And I don't necessarily want either of them. Shaq Barrett, because of, um, you know, this is really his only good year out of his, what, like four or five years in the NFL. And Yannick Ngakwe, because he's only good against the pass rush and he's good against it he's not great against it he's not 20 million dollars great against it but um he's not that good against the run so he's not exactly a versatile player or what we're looking for and if we're gonna get somebody like a Yannick who's only good against the pass rush might as well re-sign Golden even though don't get me wrong Yannick is way better than Golden but you know it's just that 20 million dollars that's what I'm looking at neither of them are really worth that so if we do go the route of signing more than one big name player, we're kind of left with no money in free agency if you look at it. And that's that's usually a terrible idea, but even if we go this route, remember we set aside $7 million, so it's not like we're left with absolutely zero, uh, zero dollars left in the bank, but you could use that money to sign more role and debt players. You could use it for other expenses, which is a good thing. So, you know what I'm saying, you, you could use it. Well, we'll be good. We, we kind of set aside like $27 million when you think about it. But you could use that for expenses and that's good. You don't want to spend every single drop of money that you have in free agency. But, like I said, man, it's going to be difficult to, you know, go about this because 
The positions that we need are very expensive positions, and it all depends on what we plan on doing in the draft. But right now, this is what I got for y'all. This is what I think, or something similar to this, could happen in free agency. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know which which uh, route you like more, the route of not getting another big name player, or the route of getting another big name player. That's it for now. Video's already long. I'm out. You're... Alright guys, thanks for watching, put your comments down below, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.